Welcome everybody to Apex Racing TV for the BSR Formula Renault series from Road Atlanta in the United States. Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson here for Apex Racing TV. We're bringing you the four races tonight from the uh, with the single seater action. Alex, Road Atlanta, it's twisty, it's uh, surprisingly technical and it's also got those long straights, so some good overtaking chances. Yeah, I think we'll have some, um, some great opportunities for um, some passes tonight. Really looking forward to seeing how this one um, this one pans out it's a great circuit great combination um, I've enjoyed driving it this week and um, yeah I think it's gonna make for some good racing yeah I think you will and um, with 30 seconds left in qualifying it's currently Martin Van Lusnord who's got the advantage in qualifying 116.926 the only man in the 116s uh, Pete Berriman in second Jack Keith in third Samuel LeBert in fourth and Oscar Mangan in fifth uh, 21 cars, Alex. Numbers dwindling. Um, it's a bit of a sad story sight, a, a, a little bit, isn't it? It is, but hopefully, you know, the league admins will get behind it, get some posts out there, try and recruit some drivers. There were some discussions after last uh, the last race, and you know, I think, um, yeah, this shows. You know, can't can't rest on their laurels, can they? They've got to get out there and do some stuff about it. You know, they're the admins. Get on it. Yeah, that's it. And. Uh... Yeah, we hope to see an increase in numbers in the coming weeks. Right. Qualifying is over then. Um, where's the main overtaking place? Obviously the chicane looks like it, but how difficult is it to make passes into that tight chicane? Um, it's not too bad, actually. I think um, they sh should be able to get a f sufficient runoff of there to, um, to get quite a few few overtakes done so honestly i think we'll see quite a few there the slipstream is pretty decent down there should be uh, should be good plus we've got the reverse grid wheel to decide the uh, final three grids of the night so um thought that'll be all important in determining the pole sitters is there anybody still out there on a lap we can uh, we can be with i think stephen baxter could be into the chicane make a sim sport europe there he comes and Got this long sweeping right hander to go. I thought he backed out of it. I don't think he has. I think he's just taken a partly odd line. And he improves. And he goes ahead of Paul Denton, so up to tenth position for Baxter, so not bad. Let's have a look at the uh, conditions out there then. Uh, 25 degrees is the air temperature, 31 degrees back temperature. Um, what's the tyre wear been like this week then when you've been testing? Um, tyre wear's been pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, no real issues and whatnot. So I was just very quickly looking at the standings. Um, standings are... Yeah, I'm not showing quite right on the screen, so I do apologise about that. We need to get them updated. I'm not quite sure. Why that's um, why that's not working? Um, but just to quickly run through, we're Sir Peter Berriman leading from Dave Baker, Paul uh, Denton, uh, Martin Van Lusen, or Jack Keithy's top five in the overall drivers' championship. Team championship is Apex Racing UK, Fecker Sim Sport Europe, Apex Racing Academy, CQR Club, and Pro Sim. And in the AM championship, it is uh, Paul Denton, uh, Josh Honig, uh, Christian Rose. Stephen Baxter and Ashley Blake Hood. Right then. Okay, so down to the grid. Martin Van Lusenord on pole position, ahead of Pete Berryman with Jack Keithley in third, Samuel LeBert is fourth, Dave Baker in P5 with Oscar Mangan in P6. Jim Rose is seventh for CQR alongside Josh Thompson, Mark Pickford is ninth, tenth is Stephen Baxter. Eleventh is Paul Denton, John Godfrey in twelfth, John McHutchinson is thirteenth and Jos Honig is 14th, 15th for Matthias Sponholtz, 16th for Tom Depka, David White in 17th, 18th Ralph Cullinan, 19th Kip Stevens, George Lee Wright in 20th, and Ashley Blakehood, 21st and last. What are you expecting from this one then, the first race of the evening? It's uh, qualifying first, order, of course. Yeah, first race is always pretty good, aren't they? You know, good close um, racing, but will tend to string out just a little bit uh, as a... Uh, as the race goes, but I think um, you know, it's the next races that are going to be a bit more interesting with the reverse grids and whatnot. Okay. 
Not too long then until the red lights come on. And Martin Van Lusenord stay ahead of Pete Berryman into the first corner. Quite a fast first corner here for these guys. Here we go. Reds are rising. Green, green, green. The green light is on. Poor start by Berryman. And already Jack Keithley alongside. Already Jack Keithley through into second place. Van Lusenord got a very, very good getaway. He's ahead of all of these guys now. Oh, and the three wide in the middle. Lucky to get away with that was uh, Thompson and Pickford. Now into the S's. We usually see, oh, there's a car off, and it looks like into the wall is Paul Denton. Third place man in the championship. Poor Paul. Used to get a bit of bad luck, does Paul? One of the few drivers who seems to have applied himself uh, properly this year in this series, actually, is uh, Paul Denton, and uh, seems to have the right mindset as. Uh, Looks like Josh Thompson's having a look at Christian Rose. Uh, it's not Josh Thompson at all. It's uh, Oscar Mangan, isn't it? Who's made a very, very average start as uh, Josh Thompson also trying to get involved as well. And this is the run that we were talking about. Down this long, long back straight. We're going to have a chance into the uh, into the chicane. It looks like the bear attacking Berryman. Hard on the brakes then. Goes the bear. Locks up. Very much trying to cut him back here. And three wide further Not back. Not going to be able to get alongside. Good little battle. Oh dear me. That... <laughs> Benjamin and Libert very, very close together as well. Certainly they were going to hit each other coming through, coming out of the last corner. Managed to get away with it. Uh, which battle are you looking at there? Oh, off, uh, off goes Pickford. Um. Great start by George Lee Wright as well. He's up already into the. Uh, he's in the top ten, if not, if not, I think he's eleventh, which is brilliant. He's twentieth on the grid. Yeah, Mark obviously with wing damage, going to try and recover. Thompson up the inside of Rose. Thompson goes through and up into sixth place. Uh, Van Lusenord's away, he's a second and a bit clear of Jack Keefley, so that's probably done and dusted. Samuel Libert, um with Berryman now attacking him. Berryman late on the brakes, he looked like he was a little bit out of control, he streaks around the outside and he gets the position back, so good driving from Berryman. Look at this with um, Rose and Mangan and Stephen Baxter, Mangan easily up the inside. Rose just left the door wide, wide open and uh, he's going to pay for that with the position, I think. Yeah, like we said in the first race, some good, good generally some good battles. Oh. Um, people very close and um, yeah, Oscar and Rose. working his through. Baxter trying to recover. Can't get the move done, Stephen Baxter that time. Baker's having some connection issues there, out there as well. Just it's dropping on and off at the moment. It's worth pointing out that we're a 15 minute timed race this week as well. Oh yeah, no laps, okay. Look at this battle at the back as well. Um, Depka, Cullinan, White, Pickford and Stevens, very, very close together. Yeah, Blake Hood in there as well. Cullinan, having a little look. Yeah, Blake Hood's through. I'm doing well in the V8 supercar race of the night. Uh, Pulling in under pressure from David White in the uh, team mad car. Pulling in, in the Quaif car. Side by side and down the hill. Under braking, let's see if there's any moves into the chicane. Oh, there's a contact. I think White's hit him. And White spun round. David yeah. White spins. Was that a, just a Constantina? He just hit him up the rear end and... Uh, but it's unusual for him to be the spinner. I'm just going to drop it back and take a quick look at it on replay. See if we can see exactly no, he's, he what hit him happened and he spun. <laughs> Strange, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, very strange. Weird one. Another little view of it. Here as they just head back into uh, the chicane. But you can see why get... he got close to him as well. Got a great run out of there. But yeah, just like you say, just tags him and then the car just goes... Mm, just goes. No. 
Very unusual. Looks like it sort of bounced a little bit. Um, the Berriman. 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 Yeah. These guys are fighting amongst themselves at the moment and are letting Keithley get away. I'm pretty convinced that they're quicker than um, than Jack, but they're just um, their own in battling is um, preventing them getting um, sort of second and uh, third here. I always get, um, I don't know it's my own team, but I sort of even get a little bit worried when the Bears racing in close proximity to people because I don't, is it just a driving style that looks very, very, it looks a little bit erratic at times? Maybe a little bit, um, but I think um, Sam's, Sam's pretty good at going at good close quarters battling, I think that's the thing. And um, but then if you um, you know, if you make a mistake or you run a little wide, then there's the, the chance to um, to collect each other. It's kind of like what we saw with um, Antoine and um, Josh the other week. You know, mm. Antoine will put his car in a place where it's like, well, you can't afford to make a mistake. And of course, Josh if just ran just a little bit deep, didn't he, into uh, Lacombe at Spa, and of course they made contact. So, yeah, it's. Uh, well, it's, I've got to say, I know I mentioned it at the beginning, but what a race George Lee Wright is having already. Yeah, up to uh, ninth place from um, yeah from what was he at the back, wasn't he? he started from the back, uh, this right time, at the so, back, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, second so. the back row, back two. Once yeah, again, fun. these guys are going to exchange positions down the street. Yes, uh, Thompson and Thompson Baker as well. Thompson inside, Baker on the outside. They squeeze each other a little bit. And uh, Baker defending well and defending hard. So he goes through. Um, big day for iRacing, Alex, as well, isn't it? Um, dirt? Yes, yeah, so it is. Uh, honestly, I haven't been on. So um, I had no idea that today was the day. <laughs> today is the day. Right. It is the day of the new um, of the new build, and uh, and dirt is here, and also the 2017 uh, Gen 6 Toyota, and also the um, all the dirt cars and three new oval tracks as well, and a couple of dirt versions of existing oval tracks as well. So quite a major, quite a major change, really. And um, looking forward to having a go at that. It might not be for a while for myself, but yeah, it should be interesting. Yeah, I'm sure I'll come and have a little play at some point. The racing's going to be quite hairy, isn't it? I, I think imagine. so, to start off with, yeah. Not going to be great. So I think the people who are generally better drivers are going to, um, they're going to, have, to use, they're going to have to use the heads a little bit and be a bit patient and realise that yeah, they're probably going to get hit a few times by people who are new to it, really. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to um, <laughs> it's going to be uh, be good to be a fly on the wall on some of those um, some of those servers. I think. Let's be honest; it's hard enough for most people to drive on the tarmac, let alone them. Yep. <laughs> on the dirt. Nobody who's not having any issues out there or worried about being hit is um, Martin Van Luzenord. Um Hasn't had much uh, air time yet today, but. From the start, just pulled away now, four seconds clear of Keith to lead lapping, a good four tenths of a second quicker. I think the only thing he's in danger of is nodding off. Yeah, you could be yeah, you could well be right there. Um Mangan trying Did to see. um oh. Well actually um uh, Thompson's dropped down behind Mangan, so I'm not sure quite what happened oh, okay. to uh to Josh there, but of course he was just the last lap he was battling with Baker, so a uh, mistake I think for um for Josh. And that's um, was, allowed uh, oh, it's Oscar a half, to... half spin. Half spin at turn, what's, I think it's classed as turn three. The first little right-hander of the downhill section. Yep. A bit unfortunate for Thompson. Uh, Blake Hood and uh, John McHutchinson. Uh, yeah, there we go, 12th. Getting, yeah, getting a little bit close, so 12th and 13th. Um, it's a reasonable little battle there. Godfrey just ahead of those guys. Yep, and um, Godfrey will be desperate for a good result as well. He's not, not the cleanest and best season, really, has he, John? Yeah, I think John just needs four finishes, you know, today. That's what uh, John is in yep. desperate need of, so. We've only had the. Uh, we've had two, well, two retirements Paul Denton and Matthias Sponholtz. Um, didn't see what happened to Spawn Holtz, but I assume it was a crash as he exited the session manually, so... 
he's had enough of that one. Oh, and there's John Godfrey's around. Just, just as we said, needs a oh, good one. Dear me. I've heard his name on the broadcast or something. Gosh. Rose now closing in on uh, Thompson as well. So whatever, that little half spin has affected um, Josh somewhat because all of a sudden he's just not able to lap the same sort of pace. CQR car. Oh, what's that? Is coming see, up. There's a load of smoke in the background. I think somebody's off. One Holtz just disappeared. That's one Holtz had already disappeared. Oh, uh, he's already gone. Uh, not sure then. Any, sure. Anybody dropping down the order? I saw a ton no, of smoke. I can't see anyone else. Ah, wait. Hold on. It's David White. No, that's actually Blake Hood. Oh, and is it he's crashed with um McCutchinson? Just as we were talking about that battle, they've hit each other. That was the aftermath of um just done a little replay, so we saw the aftermath of John's spin. So that brings them back together. See exactly what happens. The exit of that very, very tricky left hand up. Massive, massive curb out there. Really upsets the, the car. And has a look into the right hand up after the, sort of the first half of the track. Oh, it just runs out a little bit wide. Wheel to wheel contact. Spins both cars around. But uh, yeah, they both continue, fortunately. I think that I think that was why it wasn't easy to see you what had happened because everyone had continued. So yeah, nobody was uh, nobody was well off the track. Um, Oscar Manga's catching Dave Baker, but not especially quickly. He's kind of got there now. Three um, tenths. He's in draft range now, though, so he will. Oh, well and truly. In. He's very close now, actually. It's funny. Just um, you get that slipstream, you really do profit instantly. Dave Baker, good defence, actually. Um, oh, probably Oscar safe. very sideways. Has to get that car all sorts of corrected very quickly. Probably said it every week about how impressed. Um, how impressive Dave Baker is in numerous aspects, but oh, Manga going for the inside. Oh, but um, he's holding off a former world championship driver here, Alex. Yeah, I mean, um, Dave's going to be there at the end of the season, almost guaranteed, I think. Just uh, consistently putting in good results, you know, you can't just keep blocking up the top fives and uh, not be a contender at the end. He's got that. BSR style nailed down though, hasn't he? Oh, he, kn he knows. Everywhere. Yeah, he knows definitely how to to run these series as Oscar um, tries to go around the outside. Baker just defending the inside again, having to go tight. Should possibly get a that's... better run out this time though. That was some behind. I mean, that's that's not too bad from Baker, but he's going to surely come with a threat here. Mangan moves out of the slipstream. I think he's going to be clear before he even reaches the breaking zone. The Irishman is through. He is. Although Baker trying to fight back into the chicane. If Mangan's good enough on the brakes, the answer, yes. Yeah, Rose couldn't quite get past um, Josh in the background as well. So Very close though, isn't it? These guys having a good little fight. So Academy versus CQR versus uh, UK. Oh, two minutes to go. So maybe two laps, do you reckon? Three, uh, probably three laps. Yeah, no, actually it's only a minute and 25 to go. So there's this lap and one more, that's all it will be. Two laps. <laughs> so uh, Peter not able to close in at all on um, Keith Lee. Um, Got company, that's why I think. Yeah, they have exchanged position, but not too much for the last few laps, to be honest. It's mainly been um, been Pete out there, so I don't know if Pete's running a little bit more downforce, something like that. I know he doesn't get an awful lot of time to do some um, testing, but I know um, the cars do respond pretty well to it being quite trimmed out for this back straight. Left the door open for Libert. Libert very late on the brakes. He somehow was making these <laughs> these corners, locking up left, right, and centre. Very very heavy on the brakes. Doing a good job here against Berryman, who, because Berryman's had the better of him for the entire season, really, hasn't he? And uh, Libert's showing some real fighting spirit and um, some great skill here. Yeah, I tell you what, it will be good to see Libert get four good races in, because 
he's also been one of those uh, unfortunate drivers seemed to get collected in some sort of lap one incident that resulted in uh, like a lost front wing or damaged yeah. front wing something along those lines so hasn't really been able to do anything oh Christian rose oh no it's all down right. the order the but i think he's all right the bear just went wide at the exit in the first sector and uh, white flag as well um andrew yes so luke martin well, got to is give him some on the back straight <laughs> martin van luznod then 7.4 seconds clear so it's a pretty good feat good um after just a um what are we talking uh, 15 minutes worth of racing here yeah, you weren't. Uh, well, I'll tell you the story in a minute. As um, Martin Van Luznod comes through, Kane has just got the final right hander to go. And the Dutchman is the man to beat here tonight. And he is the man who takes the win in round one of the evening. And Berryman beats Liber. He overtook him on the final lap. Pete Berryman taking it. Mangan just ahead of Baker. And uh, it was very close there. Close between Thompson and Rose as well. But Ro uh, Thompson gets it. Good little four car battle. George Lee Wright with a very, very good race. Uh, I think you've got to give like a driver of the race to Martin Van Luzenau, but I think George Lee Wright was uh, definitely close second. Blake Hood and Depka were close together. They're still coming across here. Uh, Jos Honig and Kip Stevens. Kip Stevens actually beat Jos Honig in the end. Not, well, something must have gone wrong for, for Honig. Yeah, Jos had some problems at the start and was quite a way back. Got a few people watching um, this week as well, but sadly, um, yeah, not the um, not the best race for him. No, but I'm sure he'll uh, I'm sure he'll bounce back. I was about to say we've got three more, haven't we? Good opportunity for him to uh, to bounce back. Plenty of chances. Um, no, the, the last night in the Ritmatec Sports Car Series, well, this morning at least, um, Mike Dam won by 40 odd seconds. Oh, wow. Absolutely ridiculous. He just he just took the pole, drove away, and absolutely destroyed everyone. So, um, it gets, you know, Van Lusenord, seven seconds in 12 laps is very impressive. Uh, at just about that same sort of rate as what he was doing. So. Very, very good. He smashed a very good field there. Right, let's take you through the finishing order then for round one of the evening here in the BSR Formula Renault Series. Martin Van Luzenod taking victory from pole position. Uh, Jack Heathley in second. Peter Berryman in third. Fourth, Samuel Liber. Oscar Mangan in fifth. David Baker in sixth, of course. Josh Thompson in seventh. Christian Rose in eighth. George Lee Wright all the way up from 20th to 9th. Great race. Stephen Baxter up to 10th. Uh, practice he was 10th. Qualifying he was 10th. And he finished 10th. So uh, there we are. That's the definition of an average race for Stephen Baxter. <laughs> John McCutchinson 11th. Ashley Blakehood 12th. 13th Tom Depka. 14th John Godfrey. 15th Mark Pickford. Kip Stevens is 16th. 17th Yossonic. 18th Ralph Cullinan. David White 19th. And the retirements were Matthias Bonholtz and Paul Denton. Right. Uh, in order to set the grid for race two, we have our customary Wheel of Fortune. So, Alex, uh, let's see what the spin will bring us. Yep, let's do it. Right in there. Kumo providing us with a new wheel of new music. And this time it didn't. Oh, it could be a fall. No, not quite. Well, <laughs> it might as well be a fall. 25th. So, <laughs> who will that be? That will be... Uh, David White, I think. Did he finish the race? I think he did. Yeah, he did just finish the race ahead of Martin Van Luzenord. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. So, I think it will be David White that, that goes on to pole position. Right. That'll be Ralph Cullinan in second, Josh Sonic third, Kip Stevens fourth, and Mark Pickford in fifth. Just a little comment, actually. Um, Alex, when you're on about some of the guys having four clean races, well, with the smaller field, there's definitely a um, an easier... It's an easier opportunity, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. You know, we've had pretty good, well, minimal retirements there, so it'll be good to see what we get for the uh, for the next one as well. Very, very close throughout the field in that race, so um, it was uh, definitely a good job done by all. Uh, Join us again for the last three races of the evening. We've got much more to come here on Apex Racing TV in the BSR Formula Renault Series.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to Road Atlanta and race two of the evening in the BSR Formula Renault series. And Martin Van Lusenau took victory in race one. It was actually a pretty good race, actually, out there. The disappointing thing is that we're down to what looks to be 20 cars, so we've lost someone else. Um, league shrinking rapidly before our eyes. Now, uh, Alex Simpson is with me and... Uh, It'll be interesting to see the reverse grid race obviously play out. Overtaking looks like it's very, very possible here, so uh, it wouldn't surprise me too much to see the likes of Van Loos not getting near the front, if not right to the front. Yeah, this could be the meeting that he does all four. Obviously, we found out with the interview last week that it was only a slowdown penalty that he couldn't quite serve in time that, was, uh, that denied him from it, really, so... He'll be hoping to do it. Certainly looked the part in the first race as well. A good three, four tenths of a second faster than anybody out there. Pretty much per lap. So, yeah, impressive, um, impressive performance. Yep, and um, everyone impressive performances out there, actually. Obviously, right uh, among them. Fantastic driving up from up 11 positions. And, uh, well, if, he, if he's up 11 positions this time, it'll mean he'll win the race, so... <laughs> They'll try and repeat that again. And it's ironic, isn't it? He gained 11 places when he was at the back of the field. Now, in theory, he's got the slower drivers in front of him. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um... It doesn't always work out like that, does it? No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, well, we'll see what he gets, how he does in this one, so... But there's definitely... definitely got an opportunity. There's definitely a glint. There was always a glint in my eyes when I came to the reverse grid races in the club series, and... I saw some of the names at the front and I thought, well, you know what? I can have them, I can have them, and I can have them. The problem is, the guys behind you are usually quicker than you. So that's what you've really got to watch out for. I found that making making it count in the very, very early going, as in being very aggressive early on, generally you could get a bit of space you know, between you and the really, really fast guys. Well, yeah, I think the important thing is you don't need to worry about the fast guys. You know, you have got to think of, you know, you've got to look forward and try and work your way up through that field. Exactly. And, you know, they, there's a limited time to do that for them as well. So if you can carry on moving forward as well, you just delay, you know, delay them getting to you. So prioritize on what's ahead. Yep. Back to laps for this one then. 12 of them. Here we go then. Red, red light is on at Road Atlanta. Green, green, green. Green light is on. David White leads us away. He's made a very good start ahead of Ralph Cullen and it's Jos Honig in third. Three wide in the middle with uh, Rose, sorry, with uh, Stevens, Pickford and Godfrey. Stevens ahead in that little battle. Good to see Kip in all these different series. Alex, he does, uh, does give it his best. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um... Oscar, I don't know what Oscar's doing right now. Oh, He's bouncing all over the place. Not fun for anyone trying to drive around him at the moment. I can hear some contact. Something's happened. Oh, Somehow big crash. Carrying the wall. Around. Big pile up. What happened there? That's three cars out. Oscar Mangan is doing a uh, great impression of a pogo stick out there. Have a look. Christian Rose is in the, uh, in the walls. Josh Thompson is in the fence. And Mark Pickford and Tom Depka and George Lee Wright are in the pits. So we've already lost six cars Jeez. in the opening lap, and that's most of them. David White, look at this. Though, oh, something happened even in front of Tom. So, not sure who it was, but yeah, it just caused carnage, unfortunately. Just look at the lead that David White's got, Alex. Brilliant for him. After yeah. after spinning off in the uh, the last race, the hitting someone. He's uh, <laughs> look at that. 2.1 seconds from Godfrey behind, and then six tenths of a second back. You've got Blake Hood and um, Kip Stevens having their little bow. Some it's more interesting even, fights going on further back. It's fairly evenly matched with Godfrey, isn't he? Uh, generally, David White. So he's yeah. got a good chance here. Yeah, we'll see what they do as um, LeBear in front of um, Luzenord. So Luzenord already to eighth place, LeBear already up to seventh. Got a little bit of time until they get to um, Hutchinson. Honig having a much better race this one. People yep. that are watching will be uh, happy to hear that. Right, he's up the inside of Stevens. Takes that position. Stevens thought about having a little look back on that, but 
Yeah, just a bit of understeer in uh, Kip Stevens's car, it looks like. Stopping him from really doing any real damage. And uh, Berryman and Baker. Side by side down the, uh, down the long straight here. Yeah, losing order on LeBaire as well. Did you see that just happen there? Well, slots back in, so does Baker. Trying to get the slipstream, see if he can get back past uh, Peter. Couldn't do it with Oscar earlier on. Peter Much very nearly... Soon. Peter very nearly um, Kobayashi did there, didn't he? Yeah. Where, like, very nearly came right back across as Lewis Hamilton did famously at Spa. Uh, absolutely smashed Kamui Kobayashi. And now uh, Baker and uh, Berryman still going at it. Baker very close to getting his position back, but Berryman had the outside line. He had the momentum, and he is uh, and he had the position. John Godfrey is still holding second place. Third is Ashley Blake Hood. Then it's Jos Honig. Then it's Kip Stevens. And then it's John McCutchinson. And if you notice, it's not. They've got a certain way um, Van Losen or the Libet. But the last couple of laps, they haven't really um, made great gains out there. Yeah, they had some time to catch up to McCutchinson. And they've done that now. Well, Martin has. And he's got past, um, got past the driver. And um, Libet will be uh, trying to do that next. And um, losing order, not wasting any time. Right on the tail of um, Kip here as well. Look at the straight line speed difference. Tucked in the slipstream, straight through. It sort of even like half, not even halfway down the straight. So Kip stuck a Honda engine in the back of that. I see. <laughs> Looks like something. On the inside, Gusley Bear as well. That's on McCutchinson. McCutchinson, a race winner, of course, at Road America earlier on this season. Stevens all over the place. He's trying to defend oh! the Bear. He can't. What's going on there? Yeah, that was um, Berryman and Hutchinson so, so close to uh, coming together. Pete and, um, yeah, for one minute it looked like it was at a guaranteed smash, but all of a sudden they uh, jinkle part. <laughs> Van Luzenod has already caught Honig. Ridiculous. Yeah. Honig was two seconds in front of the rest of them. He's going around the outside, and that is absolutely ridiculous. But look, he was just um, standing still there. That's out corner, that as well, so... Um, Jos, I think, is being uh, pretty gentlemanly to him there and just having a little lift and letting Martin go. Knows there's probably no Still point in to, fighting uh, here. His countrymen. Work, though, haven't you? That's oh, the look thing. at this battle further back there. Yeah. This is a good one. Uh, Pickford and Steve. Is it, no, is it Stop uh, Pickford? Bates, is it? Sorry, uh, McCutcheonson, McCutcheonson, Baker, Sorry. Stevens, and uh, Keithley all in amongst it. Keithley got a best run um, out of that corner as well. Um, should get Kip here, no problem. A um, little bit too far to carry on uh, with the slipstream, so Baker I think, trying to get Mike Hutchinson. I think that's a done deal as well. I think we're seeing part of why Stevens wasn't running very fast lap times. I think the car just has got so much wing on that. Either that or it's some kind of maybe a baseline or something like that. No straight line speed at all for the uh, two times BSRTC champion and the reigning Winter Series champion. Well, three wide three going wide. into turn one. Not going to go well, as Adam would say. The bear behind Berryman and ahead of your Sonic. Look at the speed they're able to carry. That's the difference, I think. Sonic destroying a cone or two. And losing order already with Ashley Blake Hood. Let's see if he can do anything about the former BSRTC race winner. I'm losing on Mike, go up the inside here. Nope, it's just going to use the... Of time. Use that straight line speed that he's got. Well, he could, is he just a little bit too far back from uh, Godfrey to get any real slipstream? So it's going to make him um, pretty um, easy. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the disheartening thing for the guys at the front is there's still seven laps to go. So any chance they've got, really... He's um, going out of the window with each passing moment as Van Luzenord sides his way through the field. You might think we're being a bit blasé about this, but there is something of the inevitable when Van Luzenord outqualified even the likes of Berryman by three tenths of a second. Yeah, he's been flying in the recent weeks, hasn't he? Absolutely back up to full speed in this car. This is the kind of performance that saw him win the uh, the very first round of or the very first championship. Oh! Oh, as, um, he has to um, get out of it somewhat there as well. Godfrey Slow just making penalty, a little mistake. So? Maybe? No? no? I don't think so. I think he'll be alright. It was more just to get to avoid um, 
uh, John there more than anything. And that can be the issue with um, you know the reverse grids and the different uh, Yam and the Pro Championships out there is that sometimes the closure speeds can be a bit high and you know even the best drivers can make little mistakes and can be contact. But what it has done is really close this battle up because uh, Blake Hood's right on uh, Martin Sale and uh, Berryman and LeBaire there as well now. Yeah, and uh, Godfrey is going to be easy meet as well for Van Luzon. That's their, their teammates, so they're going to make it massively difficult for him, I don't think. But yeah, Berryman through on Blake Hood. Godfrey going to fight Van Luzon? I don't think he is. Luzon nope. through. Uh, Le uh, Berryman with Ashley Blake could might try the outside here oh McHutchinson and uh, Oscar as well side by side through the chicane um, McHutchinson almost uh, it wasn't forced out wide but on the outside line has to get out of it Honig Very now much. dropping as well what's going on with Honig he's down in ninth place drops down behind uh, Keithley Perryman up into third and uh the bear past Blake Hood into fifth, so John Godfrey losing places, hand oh. on the fist there, and another one. And Blake Hood is, is the one to uh, right on the back of him. Yeah, Godfrey let Le Bear through there, didn't he? And um, had to um, get back onto the line pretty quick. Now he's under a bit of pressure from uh, Blake Hood. Oh, he did let him through it. Like he just got driven straight round by Samuel Lebert, such was the pace of, of him. Uh, Godfrey having a better meeting though, definitely, than he has done in recent weeks. Good yeah. battle at the, at the back actually, between uh, Ralph Cullen and Stephen Baxter and Stevens. Baxter looking to make a move. Cullinan's just got past Baxter actually. And now... Um, All, it's about to happen. Um, Andrew at the front, I feel. Yeah, I think we're going to have it now. And Luzonard goes through. David White's driven really well in this race so far, so now he needs to keep looking forward. As uh, he could still have a podium here, you know, there's I, every chance. I think, I think he, I think he will. Um, maybe, but. Le Bear, Le Bear's quick driving. as well, isn't he? Le Bear's lapping in the sort of the 18s as well, um, not Van that Luzen last lap. 18-0. Yeah, it was two White seconds quicker than White that lap. Yeah. It's just crazy. So, Dude, yeah, it's, it's... I'm not one to write off races, but I think um, I think this one might be able to just get the underline <laughs> under it, and uh, might just be that done and dusted again. Oh, Baxter and um, Cullinan. Like you were saying earlier on, still continuing this little battle. Baxter trying to go round the outside, can't quite pull it off. Yeah, Baxter having a good scrap. Whoa! Oh! There we go. <laughs> round and around and away. Get back on the circuit, Baxter. And actually, he's only they lost couldn't... one. He's only lost one place due to the fact that uh, Elby Stevens is behind him on the lead lap anyway. So. Godfrey Deep holds on from um, Blake Hood there as well. Had to defend pretty aggressively into the chicane. Does that. Oh, the touching wheels. Team Madcar almost runs a little bit wide. And they hold on. This is opening the door for um, Baker behind them. Keith Keithley. Lee's there as well. Keith has got a good run through turn one, but not quite into uh, into there. I used to absolutely hate this place, Alex, and uh, now I actually quite enjoy it. It's one of yeah, those that too. it grows on you as you as you drive it more. Yeah, it does. I think you know you just sort of have to learn the limits of the car with this particular track. Some you can really abuse the curbs, and well, others you can't at all. Yeah. And um, John having to go extremely defensive. It oh, 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 Blake that Blake. The outside. oh, nice. That was nice. Very, very good. Oh, Baker having to oh. really get on oh, the brakes Baker's as well. Oh, Baker's gone wide and he nearly crashes. Now he's having to... What's he doing? What is he doing? He's pushed Godfrey onto the grass there. I don't know what the weaving was about. Now he's going to make it three wide. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I have to say that's probably a little bit on... I mean, obviously so there was a lot going them, on. There was a lot going on down that straight, but Godfrey I think, came across a bit. Yeah, didn't John did come across there. He needed to hold that inside line. There were three wide. Uh, we're not going to have many left, I think, at the end of this. 
I'm losing all these by three seconds. Bremen's just got ahead of White into second place. Uh, Liber is, th is fourth. So, uh, David White, he's got three laps. I don't know if he's going to hold off Samuel Liber for three laps. Liber has got damage, though. Try his best. So, but he's still doing 18s. So. Yeah. But a better um, a better lap from um, from uh, White that time as well. It's still a great result for David White, let's oh, be honest. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's going to hold on to... He's going to have a top four finish, that's for sure. Because um, Keithley 7.8 seconds back. Yeah, when P4 is the worst it can get, um, might as well have a little scrap with uh, with Samuel Liber here if he can. See as Liber gets a run down the back straight. You're on lap 10 of 12. Apex Racing TV, BSR Formula Renault, Andrew Woodhouse, Alex Simpson with you as White and Liber going to battle. White is late on the brakes, but Liber, oh, and he's missed the corner, but. He sort of scared David White off the road at the same time. It was so, uh, was such a crazy entry. What's he doing now? It's not a great line, but... David White's got a chance to get back here. Go on, why not? Have a go. Oh. I think he realises he wants that fourth place as well, you know. I think that's fair enough. Eight seconds back to Keithley. Just, just uh, maintain that. You're not going to lose eight seconds in two laps. Uh, official retirements are Tom Depker, Christian Rose, George Lee Wright and Josh Thompson. I didn't see what happened to George Lee Wright. I assume he was involved in the uh, first lap. First lap melee. John Godfrey is limping his way around. Horrible damage. Tom the Renault. Absolutely uh, knackered out there. Look at that. He's going to really struggle to make that round without crashing, I think. Yeah, we'll keep it off screen for the moment. <laughs> Two laps to go then. Martin out front. Fairly comfortable. Again, just lapping a bit quicker than everybody else. It's not really what's got him to the front. He has uh, done some really good moves. And um, worked the traffic really well. Broke away. White is still with Lebert. Lebert's damage is... Um, oh. Couldn't quite defend the inside enough, so yeah, LeBear really struggling with the straight line speed with the wing wing damage that he's got last lap. White might just hold on for a podium here. Yep. Let's see. Final lap. So he's got a great chance if he can nail his exits. That's what he needs to do. Oh dear, well. Yeah, it's not gonna do it. <laughs> that's nailing something. Well, let's hope, can he recover in time to stay in front of Keithley? No, he no. can't. Oh, he's lost his top four. And he's it's lost the top five. Slipping away. Oh, gutted. And Oscar slides up the inside as well. That's seventh. Sorry. And it might be... It, I don't think it's going to get any worse because Jos Honig is two seconds behind. But poor old David White. Not doing so well. And uh, it just came a cropper at the end. Now Martin Van Luzenoord. Well, not becoming a cropper here, at least I don't think so. He's got this the final corner to go, and he's on his way to the double victory here at Road Atlanta. Two out of two for Martin Van Luzenor for two weeks in a row. Behrman second, no problems there. LeBaire will come across and take third. Close Follow between points. Keithley and Baker, but yeah. close-ish. Oh, look at Blake Hood's car. What is it? Yeah, that wing's just a little bit crumpled, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A lot of drivers threw away good results in that in that race, to be honest. And uh, and yeah, let's take you through the finishing order for race two out of four this evening. Martin Van Luzenor takes the win by three and a half seconds. Started from 19th place on the grid. He was on the back row, Van Luzenor. He made it look easy. Peter Berryman in second. From the row in front of Van Luzenord. In fact, I don't think we've ever had it, Alex, where the top six on the uh, finishing order all started in the back uh, three, three and a half rows of the grid. No, I don't think we have. So Van Luzenord 19th, Berryman 17th, Lebert 16th, Keithley 18th, 
Baker 14th and Mangan 15th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. David White 7th in the end. Gutted for him in the end after a fantastic drive. Jos Honig in 8th. John McCutchinson in 9th. Paul Denton 10th. He made up 10 places. Uh, Ralph Cullinan 11th. Kip Stevens 12th. 13th for Ashley Blake Hood. Uh, Steve Baxter is 14th and John Godfrey 15th. Mark Pickford a lap down in 16th. And then the retirements were Depka, Rose, Wright and Thompson. On to the next, Alex. The Wheel of Fortune. Yep, let's jump straight into it and see um, see what we get. Who will um, will be taking it? Looks like a small one this time. Fifteenth is going to be yep, small as we could get. And John Godfrey is on pole position for race three. So uh, with Stephen Baxter, Ashley Blakehood, Kip Stevens, and Ralph Cullinan alongside him on the front few rows of the grid. Okay, so uh, there's more to come from the Apex Racing TV, uh, from Apex Racing TV and the BSR Formula Renault series right after this break. We'll see you in a bit.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group, 
to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back to Road Atlanta, round three of the evening in the BSR Formula Renault Series. Rudd House and Alex Simpson with you for Apex Racing TV, as we have been all season. Uh, no Adam Bath tonight, I believe he's on the source, but that's fair enough. Uh, so <laughs> Martin Van Luzenoord is looking to make it uh, historic. Uh, four wins out of four. Got two out of the way already. This one could be a fairly tricky one, as there's some fairly fast drivers at the front of the field this time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this one might be a little harder for him to get all the way there, or if he does it, we're right at the end of the race. So it should be a really, really good battle out there. Um, can't underestimate oh. the rest of the field out there. This is no, it's no easy task to try and get four out of four, and the fact that he's going, you know, he wants to try and do this is, you know, it's really saying something. So, well, it proved um, that last week, didn't it? When yeah. um, 
you know, one thing if one thing goes wrong, you don't get your four, do you? That's what happened with the, uh, the slowdown penalty that you got. Now, John Godfrey, uh, his reward for crashing into Ashley Baker is pole position, apparently, Alex. So I don't know how that one happens, but uh, but there we have. It. Yeah, obviously he's of a difference of opinion, as I spoke to him off air on there but um yeah it was definitely a six of one half a dozen of the other they're both being a, a bit, bit crazy down there but yeah ultimately john come across and um yeah Ash it was, was a racing incident, all I over think. the place it so. was it was a tough situation for everyone involved i, I think john godfrey is on pole position steven baxter second third ashley baker fourth kip stevens fifth ralph cullen in sixth pole denton seventh mccrutchinson uh honigan eighth ninth white and tenth oscar mangan Okay then. The red lights are beginning to come on. Green, green, green. Green light is on. Godfrey gets away well. So does Stephen Baxter. Baxter might get ahead. He might stay ahead of Ashley Blake. He might get Godfrey here as well. Godfrey goes a bit wide. He's going to cover it. Oh, someone's, someone's around. Who was that? Looks like Pickford. Oh, Pickford had the problems in the last race as well. Was it Stevens? No, I think it was Kip. It is Pickford. And Pickford. So both oh, of them both around. Of them. So Godfrey leads, then Baxter, then Blake Hood, then uh, Bullingham, then McCutchinson. McCutchinson off as well. All the, all the team have gone. And into the wall goes Honig. Ah, oh, poor right Honig. Right in front of McCutchinson. What happened there? Let's take a quick little Two look at that back. Ones. Oh! Ooh. Oh, Honig just loses it out of that uphill left hand. Uh, easy to do there on the first lap with the cold tires. And, the yep, Christensen had already happen. lost it. Come on, John. Let's see, let's see what you can do. The Godfrey. Had some good battles with um, Baxter, and these guys are pretty Ooh. close in the academy test sessions as well. As Baxter gets all up and very, very personal <laughs> with John's <laughs> rear end there. Very close. He was right up his finger, Alan. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, but these guys, um, these guys are pretty close in the um, testing sessions that they uh, practice in all week as well. So this will be a good little battle. That's a classic Apex Racing TV quote, is that? As um, that's from 2010. As Jack Keithley. Is battling hard with uh, David White. Managed to survive that battle. And uh, Van Lusenod is. Uh, six. Lusenod, oh, just six. Gosh. Yep. Eight places already. Lap two. Oh, look at this. This is Godfrey a little battle further back as well. Three wide. Oh. Godfrey and Baxter side by side as well. Godfrey manages to stave him off this time. Baxter's got a good exit going to be good enough as I believe that's Thompson uh, managing to get a place on white it's me while well, watching the battle for the front as well losing or takes Cullinan down the street John having to defend again into the uh, chicane does that there's not through into fifth, fifth? yeah fifth so comes Baxter no Oof. Gosh. It was so close. Pulling in and Berryman side by side. Berryman goes around the outside, carries a lot of speed in, and uh, Pulling in almost slides up and hits Berryman, but the Irishman, uh, Northern Irishman, that is, manages to get out of the way. Oh, oh, side by side with Van Lusenod and Baker. This is great. Baker's trying to keep it. England versus Holland here. CQR versus Apex Racing Academy. And a good cutback by Van Lusenord. It looks like he's going to do it. Yeah, but uh, Berryman might have the, the best of the run here. Can he follow his teammate through? Around oh, the Baker. outside? No, he can't. Oh, Baker, Baker just defends the that. Here comes Cullinan. Oh, someone's around and oh. recovering. They're all scattering. They're all around. And off goes Cullinan. Was that Baxter and Godfrey? It was Baxter. Oh, Godfrey just Baxter. Still Godfrey's still going. Let's take a little look, look at, at the back. You might want to hold off on that because they're all swarming around in Go the middle. Berryman and Van Lusenord and, uh, and Libert. 
Big scrap. Huge scrap here. Oh, good move by Van Lusenord on Berryman. Forces his way through. Yeah, sorry about that, Alex. There was a big... It's just a big old battle. I could see that coming. Yeah, no, no problem. Let's jump it back then and take a quick look. See what it's... Um, see exactly what happened there. Ah, oh, it's not far enough. Baker and Van Lusenord past Blake Hood. So that's for second and third. And there's all sorts going on. Blake Hood's got to slow down, I think, possibly, because he's dropping down the order. Yeah, big time seeing that now. Right. So, we pick it up going through the S's then. After we saw that great overtake. And uh, Godfrey got a little bit out of shape coming through the, the final uh, left-hander there. And um, it was actually Baxter who got into the lead. So, is there any contact or anything like that from behind? No, he just completely loses it on his own. And everybody has to scatter to um, avoid uh, Baxter. So he gets to the lead and then <laughs> throws it away. Oh. Uh, Baker still hasn't given up against Van Lusenord. He's uh, side by side with the Dutchman. Van Lusenord's through. That's straight line speed, Alex. is looking a treat for him. Yeah, last few weeks in a row now, the Apex cars have been Ooh. extremely trimmed out. Everyone seems to be struggling to um, to hold them off and uh, yeah, no chance for uh, Baker there again. How did you find the driving round here this week? Yeah, I really enjoyed it uh, around here. This is a good um, good track and car combo. So, you know, really test the driver because you want to take some of this curb in here, there and everywhere. But it's very difficult to um, to do that in these little Renaults. Oh, it's Le Bear. Oh, it's very that. close to... Um, no, it's Berman, sorry, to Baker. But he thought about a go, having a go, didn't he? And it's a very, very tricky place to overtake. You can do it, but it's almost nice. impossible. And Van Lusen, so hard. just as in the previous race, Right with Godfrey. Van Luzon makes a slight mistake, but he recovers well and shoots past Godfrey on the exit. And here comes Baker. Baker possibly going through as well. Yeah, Godfrey, Godfrey on the inside. He's fighting back. Baker not... around the outside. Godfrey up the inside. Oh, this is great stuff. And look Baker's at Berryman. Got the better run. Where is Three Berryman? <laughs> the bear's coming because this could be four. There's some Auto Club Speedway action on our hands here. I think Martin's he's looking happy. for a he's way through. It. Oh! I thought he was going to go then. Baker on the inside. Godfrey in the middle. Godfrey's. Oh, they're all going for it. Baker. Baker going to do it. Is Berryman going to do it? Berryman's through. Is Godfrey going to get back at Baker here? Godfrey on the inside. Lee Bear's there as well. Look at. Who's that? Thompson, I think. Yeah, Thompson behind now as well. Gosh. Closed in. Well. I have to say, they all survived for the moment, anyway. The fantastic <laughs> oh, battle. As Godfrey's Godfrey. out of shape going into turn one. Oh, collects it Baker back nearly up. collects... Baker nearly collects the other car. Oh, Baker's lost control. Ooh. And oh, and Blake Hood hits Keithley. Baker loses control. And uh, he was lucky he didn't take the lot of them out, actually. They've yeah, easily still... been all of them gone. Still there, still intact, so he's okay to survive that. But yeah, just um, John was particularly loose in front of him, and um, yeah, he um, you know tried to dart to the inside there. It's such a tricky place to go for a move. This uh, blind corner, you you know you really are risking it if you go for that. And I think Baker knew that. Tried to lock up and you know or tried to get out of it a little bit. Locked up in the process, just lost the back end. Ironically, Keithley. Um Despite getting hit up the rear end, he's actually, uh, he's actually gained from that. But I think he's suffering in a straight line because here comes Christian Rose having a look on the outside. I wonder if Keith had cut the course there. It's very, very far across the inside curve. How much of that inside curve can you take? Yeah, you can take quite a bit of it actually before you actually get a slow down. You get a 1x. They did take a um, bit of grass there. Pretty quick. Yeah, you just get a 1x for that. Um, Pickford around the outside no of Blake Hood. The Mark Pickford recovery. To the early bother. And losing odd leads by 1.6. On the last lap, Berryman was four tenths of a second quicker, so we could still have a battle on our hands here. Yeah, Mark, um, although he had that spin on turn one, he's um, he was fortunate enough, even though he was third at the time, to actually avoid getting hit. So his car looks um, in pristine condition, and all this battling has um, allowed him to, um, to sort of gain some position. So, yeah, back up to tenth. 
And um, yeah, looking good. Lap times look good out there as well. I think at this sort of rate, he's definitely got the ability to maybe get back up to a sort of like around sort of six, maybe seventh place. So yeah, I think you're right. Got a good chance. Um, I was obviously a few drivers having issues with the final, you know, the final left-hander coming out of that first sector uh, with that big outside curve, and it yep. really can unsettle you, can't it? The surface transition. Oh, big time. Well, the car's so low. I mean, we. You know the front ride height of these cars are about 17 millimeters off the ground the rear most of the time is going to be between something like 25 and 32. Um, it's like probably even a narrower margin than that to be fair probably say 28 and 32. that's all, um, almost like just like the width of your thumb yeah so it was ridiculously Ridiculous. low to the ground so you can understand why a big curb that is about half the height of their tire you know, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, causing yeah. them some issues. Well, do you remember uh, when we were all at Silverstone? Remember Martin did a race and uh, came a cropper over that very curb and ended up in the wall. Yeah, yeah, so easy, um, so easily done. Oh, this is a great battle oh, as well. Oh my goodness, now, who's off who was... there? Denton's off, I think. Yeah, it was Paul. Just ran a he's bit through. wide. Easy done. Jack Hold trying to hold on. It's just his damage now. Oh, Baker just goes. All the way around the outside. Is he going to go around the outside of the second part? It'll be very impressive if he manages that. Got the speed. Great run out of there. Rose is coming as well. So, oh, look at the lack of speed that Keith has got. He's in yeah, all sorts of him. trouble, isn't he? It's like Stevens in the first race. And the thing is, is the queue of cars coming by as well. So, we can't even duck back in. There you go. That's his opportunity to get in and try and get some slipstream as the uh, two CQR guys have a little battle. Um, Rose having a look on, um, oh, sorry, Baker having a look on Rose. There's that, also was a, a, that was a change of position then so Rose actually got by um, his teammate on that straight there So we've also got a very good one between Oscar Mang and George Lee Wright and Kip Stevens George Lee Wright's on the grass oh dear yeah Kip sees him coming leaves enough room and uh, Oscar Manga not giving any uh, room to George Lee Wright there Oscar had a Oscar took a trip to the pit, so I don't know if he got any damage or anything like that earlier on and needed to um, jump in, but uh, he has. Mm. Oh no, uh, Heathley under more pressure this time from Pickford, and you were right about Pickford coming through the order quickly. He might be able to go around the outside here. It's a very favoured spot for overtaking this first of these right-handers. I think the Good outside exit. line there just gets Ready. you lined up, you know, you get a better shoot out of that corner. It's so critical. Yeah, I think you're right there. Got to, you've got to get that line right, haven't you? Otherwise, you toast down here. One of the toughest corners on any race circuit, that one. is so, mis um, so misleading, you know. You you think it's a lot wider than it is, and, you know, so much time to be made and lost there. Who's Edson that behind? And uh, McCutchinson, Edson. possibly, is it? Yeah, it is. McCutchinson... Round the outside oh. of the um, chicane, gets a much better drive off. That Denton can't do anything about it whatsoever. I've not seen anything of Tom Depka really tonight. He's uh, 13th at the minute, started 17th. Yeah, up four places. Just, you know, Tom just had so much bad luck. I think he's just literally trying to, you know, Get some good solid finishes underneath him, you know. Just needs some finishes, needs to score some points. You know, he's cons normally consistent enough that I would see him in that sort of, you know, top five of the AM championship, but just had such poor luck. Ah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, Start of the season, <laughs> the he was involved he's in everything. Uh, Denton. Uh, Goodness me, sorry. McCutchinson, Denton and White are quite close together as well. Denton's got a run. A very good run. Pulls out the slipstream, he might clear him. Cleared him, nearly. Before he even gets to the chicane, McCutchinson dives down the inside again. Late on the brakes, and that's well done. Heath is suffering big time out there. Baxter and Cullen... Um, Baxter still struggling and um, got a bit of damage on his wing as well so maybe that's slowing him down Mangan yes. behind him yeah Mangan not having a great race uh, started 10 down to uh, 
Well, he has, like I say, he has been into the pits so for whatever reason. He's done. I don't know if that was a penalty, like Great a penalty. penalty, or whether it was uh, some damage that was uh, that forced him in. When did he come in? Was that lap? Uh, Sadly, I can't. I don't came in that. on the second lap, so it could have been jump start. No, it could have been Thompson um, past uh, Godfrey now. So Godfrey made a little mistake there, I think, because all of a sudden he's uh, Josh is two and a half seconds up the road. So he's keep it together, just John, and he's got a top five here though. We've only got two laps to go, and um, Rose is 2.5 seconds back. Why is it, mate, that we didn't see any? Uh... We didn't see any jump starts, it seemed, for like about three years on Apex Racing TV. And then we got about three in the last four weeks. I know, crazy. Berriman trying hard to see if he can put um, losing order under a little bit of pressure. Last couple of laps has been a couple of tenths of a second quicker. Um, we are on the last lap and he's 1.3 seconds back. So unless Martin makes a big mistake, I can't see anything happening there. But it does, um, does just show you that, you know, Pete... Obviously, he just runs this series. He just jumps in it on the night, so limited time to test. It's but quicker as by the, the day end goes of the on, though. yeah, the end of this meeting, he's going to be there. You know, I think right with uh, Martin, so we might have one heck of a final race. Yeah, and losing all trying to make it a perfect four out of four. He needs to get this third one. It is the final lap. Does only have the chicane and the final right hander to go. We'll be able to take the hat trick. He took the hat-trick last week, of course, but um, couldn't take all four. Yeah, that's what got him to fourth in the championship standings. He's missed a few weeks as well, I remember, was skiing in Germany. Dropped him out of the top ten, but he's bounced back amazingly well. And he wins round three of the evening. Tim Van Luzenord. Fantastic. Uh, Samuel LeBaire coming on for a well-deserved podium. This is exactly how you wanted LeBaire to drive the weekend, really. Is, uh, the weekend, the meeting, is to get uh, get these good results on the board. Yeah, absolutely. So, sir. Oh, it's close between White and Denton here. Very close. I don't think White can do anything, can he? Oh, he might be able to. No, it's not. The line is so close, isn't it? Yeah. To the, uh, to the final corner, really. You've got to get the move done either in or before the last corner. And this is what George Lee Wright's trying to do. Look at him trying to find him, trying to find a run, but he can't, oh, he can't even get one. That was very close. He was just a 10th behind, was George. Ip Stevens, the final man across in 19th place. We only lost one car in that race, so that was a well-driven, uh, quite well-driven race. Yeah, poor Jos at the start, unfortunately. We do have to remember, though, when we moan about small grids, there are only 20 cars in Formula 1. Well, yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? You know, it's a, <laughs> actually, it's not a bad it's not a bad grid. There are a lot um, of private leagues out there that we've seen in the past that would be lucky to get 10, so... Yeah. You know, but come on, guys, we need to... Uh, people need to sort this out, get some more people in. Uh, well, right, let's take you through the finishing order, then, for round three of the evening here at Road Atlanta. Martin Van Luzenord takes to win once more. By 1.2 seconds over Pete Berryman. Samuel LeBert is third. Josh Thompson fourth. John Godfrey did a very nice race, really, and finished in fifth place. Christian Rose in sixth. Up 12th places from where he started. Dave Baker, P7. Head of Mark Pickford in eighth, who um, started uh, 16th, then had a bad start, dropped to the back, and then rose through the field very, very well. Jack Keithley had damage and finished ninth. Tenth was Paul Denton. Eleventh, David White. Tom Depka, twelfth. John McCutchinson, 13th. Ashley Blake had 14th. 15th, Oscar Mangan. Uh, 16th, Ralph Cullen. And George Lee Wright in 17th. 18th for Stephen Baxter. 19th for Kip Stevens. And as we mentioned, we lost Jos Honig at the, uh, after about one lap because he crashed. Poor Josh. Fancy you rubbing it in there, look. It's not a bad... It's not a very good meeting for him, really. He's, had, he's, he's, dry, he's driven very well this season. Yeah, first race obviously had the problems, didn't he? he? was way at the back, and then that second one was okay. Um, Can't and, even get the yeah. reverse grid pole now, unfortunately. And this one, yeah, yeah, disaster. So he's going to have to start the final race from the very back. Might be a, a good thing, though. We've seen um, Josh Thompson started from the back in this race, finished fourth. George Lee Wright started from the back in race one, and he finished ninth. So things can be done. Right, let's see who is going to be on the reverse grid then.
been fools coming around. Fool has come around. So, yeah, we haven't seen one for a little while, have we? But we do have one. All right, that's going to be Kip Stevens then, who is uh, going to be on pole position. Stephen Baxter is going to be alongside him. Then it's going to be George Lee Wright, Ralph Cullinan, and Oscar Mangan. Now, Oscar Mangan could be the one, uh, Alex, to make it very difficult for Martin Van Luzno. Yeah, absolutely. Um, George Lee Wright as well is quick tonight, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, if either one of those can get to the front quickly and sort of scamper away, that's going to make it very, very difficult for Martin. That will be the last thing he would have wanted to see right out there was that full spin. Although Van Luzenord's uh, average first lap gain must be close to 10 positions tonight. So um, every chance still of making it four out of four. We'll see if he can do it. Second attempt in as many weeks for Van Luzenord. And uh, yeah, John is back here after this break to see whether the 4 out of 4 can be completed.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
join us for the final time this evening at the Road Atlanta circuit in the United States. The BSR Formula Renault Series here on Apex Racing TV. Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson bringing you all the action here of what's been a, a pretty good meeting, actually, and a, a very good meeting, Alex, for uh, Martin Van Luzenon. He's won all three races tonight. Yep, exactly. Trying once again, second week in a row, to go 4-4. Four four. We couldn't have made it any harder for him. We pulled a reverse, full reverse grid on him. So, yeah, he's going to have to do it from the back. Um... Well, 18th, he's 18, 17 cars he's going to have to go through. So, yeah, it should be interesting to see um, how he does there. Um, but, yeah, it's been actually it's been a pretty pretty reasonable meeting. A um, mm. couple of collisions. We've hard, hardly had anything. Racing standards have been pretty good out there. Slightly smaller grid, um, which obviously does help that. Um, yeah, so um, hopefully, um, you know, we can, this final race can be much of the same and we can see some good racing. Yes. And, uh, well, final time tonight, Bob Renos. So we'll see. Um, can end on a high note here at Road Atlanta. It's been a good. It's been some good. Uh, it's been some good stuff out there. As the green light is on. If Stevens said into the first corner, can he lead? The answer is probably not. Stephen Baxter has just gone all the way around the outside. Great Fantastic stuff, from Baxter. Fantastic stuff from him. George Lee Wright into second place as well. Next game, Oscar. tricky at the back. Martin Van Luznod is all bottled up here. Yeah, Oscar into third as well, so it's not what Martin wanted. But um, yeah, as we jump on board with him as well, he's got, I think that's Pete to his left as well. So um, yeah, he's going to have a tall order to get to the front, that's for sure. George um, having a little it. look on Baxter going into the, um, the right hander halfway through the circuit, darts to the inside. Cuts up the inside of Baxter and takes that lead. Baxter gets a good run out of the corner. And Mangan does as well. So we could be oh, three wide going cars. into the chicane for the first time. A couple of cars uh, off at the double apex right-hander. I don't know if Van Luznod got um, the contact, did he? No, just a twitch as uh, bypass two or three different cars. I'm going to keep we were, an eye on Martin, Alex, as well. We, we were three wide. Sorry, Andrew. Uh, so I didn't realise you weren't seeing that one. But um, Oscar takes the lead. Baxter manages to get a, a run back on Lee Wright and um, gets himself back into second place. But they're all through and safe and sound. No problems. Kip struggling a little bit. He's got McHutchinson trying to go around the outside of him in the final corner as well. And Luzanor's just done the bear around the outside of the second part of the chicane, which is quite extraordinary. He's just, oh. he's going hell for leather, you can tell, as it's getting very congested in the midfield as well. A few cars really, really close together. The likes of um, Rose and Denton and Pickford, Baker, Keithley. Oh, Van, Lu oh, Van Luzon's off. That'll probably be a slowdown penalty. I think you were right on that one, actually. Yeah? If he'd, yeah, I think so. If... Um, it had been the. Oh, no, there is, uh, there's definitely a slowdown there, Alex. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. And that's probably over again for him. Yeah. He always gets them on the fourth race, doesn't he? So he tried to go around the outside, just a little bit too ambitious. So still got 10 laps to go, though. Oh, and um, he's got it served pretty quickly. Peter Berriman in front of him has got some damage. Oh, so he hasn't got teammate, it served. Oh, he's still serving it. He can't afford to have happen what happened the last time, where he just didn't Seems serve done. it quick enough. Yeah, and he give him a. A drive oh, Mangan, penalty. Mangan nearly loses it and through goes Baxter. Mangan trying to get back through again, using that traction off the corner very, very well. But it's looking a bit sketchy out there for Mangan. He's having all sorts of problems with his, his connection as well. He's been really suffering. He missed a race a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Because he didn't have any connection. Oh, George um, Wright up the inside. Oh, no. Wright's made it through. That's brilliant, actually. Van Luzenord is a goner, I think. Yeah, 12 seconds off the lead. Can't see that happening. He won the last, the first race by seven from pole. So, um, and only won the, won the last race from for, by one second when he was uh, when he was already up in sixth after one lap. So, I'm going to keep well, an eye out on him anyway. We'll see how passed, far he uh, can get. I mean, of course, Jos Honig, championship leader as well, Pete Berriman. He'll want to move forward, but you can see that damage on the right front of uh, on his wing there. So that's going to uh, hurt him. So good chance for Dave Baker, who's just ahead of him right now on the circuit, to try and pick up some points because obviously he was slipping a little bit further behind um, Berryman going into this race. So Berryman is Dave now under pressure from Van Luzenor, would you believe? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not surprised because um, 
Pete, you know, just a little bit slow. He's tucked in the slipstream. Oh, they're going to go three wide. Three wide. Baker's in the middle. Baker's the meeting the sandwich. There's something gone off at the chicane as well. I don't know. What just a lock is. up, I think. Baker. Oh, Baker. On contact. Van losing on hits. Godfrey. Godfrey's around. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there. So, um, oh dear. I'm unfortunately, I think um, Martin will have not. to take that one on the chin, I'm afraid. He might Godfrey not keep, won't be happy. He might not keep his win, even if he does get one. Yeah. For that. Uh, Oscar Mangan coming under a bit of pressure from George Lee Wright. Back to the lead. Stephen Baxter in a solid third position. There's a bit of a gap there as well to um, fourth place man Ralph Cullinan. Then it's Jack Keithley, then Josh Thompson, then McCutchinson, and then uh, Libert. Berman's retired, I think. Certainly into the pits, maybe just getting... No, he has, he's called it a, called it a day, so... What happened to Pete? Um, well, well, nothing extra. Um, I think just obviously the issues that he was having out there, he's just sort of pulled the car in, so... Yeah, I thought he might have finished the, uh, the race off. What's going on behind? That's Keith Lee and... Cullinan? Cullinan, yeah. Yeah, Cullinan. Cullinan up in a very solid fourth. And he hold off Jack Keith for the man who was in the Road Pro Series. No, he can't, is the answer. That's nice and easy. Uh, McCutchinson. John McCutchinson going past Josh Thompson. That's good. Oh, no, sorry, not Josh Thompson. That's Samuel Bear that McCutchinson's just done into the chicane, so good move there. Well, what I will say is Pete retiring is really good news for Baker. That, Depending on how many points um, Martin's caught up on Baker this week, it might well put Baker back to the top of the championship. And losing all than Baker, meanwhile, are squabbling over 14th and 15th. They're not really having a particularly stellar uh, race so far when you consider there's only 20 drivers out there. Baker goes a bit wide. Pickford on his teammate as well. Pass Kip. Kip lets him go. Oh, this is a good... Oh, Kip. Oh, Kip's bottom really struggling here. Yeah. Oh, that's a crash. Really struggling was Kip there. Really slow offline, and you know everybody was just struggling to check up. I think for what they need there, and yeah, and fortunately Paul hit him, and yeah, um, around, around they go. I'm losing or struggling because Baker's gone through again. Must have a must have aero damage on that car. Yeah, we did hit the. Um, he did obviously hit John, didn't he? Quite heavily yeah. when he set, when he spun John around. So. Yeah, Although he's going through on Baker here, I think Baker's just trying to make life very difficult. Oh, Van Luzno defends the inside. Baker tries to uh, get back through. Van Luzno with understeer. Baker trying everything he can to fight back. This is good from Dave Baker. Yeah, you got to do it, haven't you? You know, you can't just let these guys have it their own way. Here he comes. Um, just because they're, uh, you know, they're quick and they've been doing it all, all season so far. We but can yeah. forget about the uh, the clean sweep now. 100 percent as uh, 17 seconds is the gap there's no way that's happening oh, unless, cars, there's, um, unless there's an apocalypse at the front yeah mchutchinson and um and baxter together as well oh they crashed what was that so that's another two places for those look two. at the state of mchutchinson's car oh they were side by side going with through Liber, the final I turn think, was it libez ended up with some damage off that as well uh what the unluckiest man in i racing tom depka's actually got managed to get past that <laughs> Oh yeah, and they just collided with each other there. Just no, no room. I mean, let's be honest. If Pedro Zoli was here, he'd have probably got involved in that as well, wouldn't he? <laughs> Dear me. But yeah, so Lebert's got the same wing damage as what we saw with Peter having, and uh, I have to say that's that's all on um, Lebert. There, he just got into that battle. He didn't need to. Rose, um, Rose versus Depka. Rose yeah, makes Rose. a very clean move. Cullen and, and Pickford are side by side as well. That's Pickford up into. Uh, I think that'll be eighth place. It might be ninth. Eighth, yeah. Eighth. That'll be eighth, yeah. So that's that. Pickford's had good. good pace this week. Um, yeah, it's just uh, you know, it's just a shame he's had a couple of little incidents. Side. And I'm gonna have to defend here around the outside. It's very tricky to do. Oh, Cullinan. Cullinan fighting back beautifully. Yeah, nicely Martin done. Martin Van Luzenord. Remember him? <laughs> the, yeah, never Dutch count him out. The first three races. So this will be to get himself oh. back into a top turn and just shows his nose up the oh, inside. Oh, again! Oh! That was so, so close. How Mark Pickford did an outstanding job to not get taken great, out. Great, great driving for Mark. A little he reckless. He, he realised right there that 
he couldn't afford to turn in and that he had to give Martin some room and Martin's already passed Cullinan as well. So. Give Martin some credit though, that is, eight, that is eight for him. Even after all that. Very, very good. Well, Cutchinson and Baxter look like they've both retired. Baxter doesn't look like he's really got a great deal of damage on his car, but obviously not going to... Uh... Yeah, he'd hit the wall pretty hard though. Yep, yep. Uh, maybe, George, I can't, maybe I can't once... see the damage bit. Yeah, one second behind uh, Mangan now, so out of the slipstream. So I think these guys are just going to um, scamper away. Keithley uh, just lapping just a little bit slower than they are as well. So, yeah, one, two, and three, I think, are pretty safe. Thompson, um, well, I wouldn't say he's safe from LeBaire. LeBaire is 3.2 seconds um, back, and actually, LeBaire's wing has repaired itself. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we see that, don't we? Sometimes he did the hit phantom, though, the phantom he? damage, but he did make contact with them. But yeah, yeah it's obviously um, it's obviously not as bad as the uh, the simulator thought. He was seven tenths quicker than Josh Thompson on the last lap as well, so mm. uh, he's got every chance of getting of getting close. Baker passed Cullinan as well. So next up for uh, Baker is uh, Pickford. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to be um, easy though, because uh, like I say, Mark has been um, racing. Pretty well tonight. Good lap times. Solid performance. Baker's lapping about three quarters of a second quicker than Pickford, but Pickford yeah, obviously has been involved in a lot of battles. Yeah, that was only because um, he obviously lost the place, didn't he, last lap? Yeah. To Martin, so. And, and with, well, in that squabble in the first sector, you're mm. right. And losing odd himself, 117.9 the last time round. That was one second slower than Oscar Mangan, so. Yeah. Not making the progress that he, he would like, but I mean, he still might be able to get into the top five. It's, it's, nah, he won't be able to get into the top five. He might be able to get, I think if he P6, can get, I think he might be able to get, yeah, exactly. P6 probably the, the best he, he can do he, here. Oh, he did a 16 7 on that lap, though. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty handy, actually, isn't it? That's the fastest lap of the, uh, is the fastest lap of the race? That's the fastest lap of the meeting, isn't it? <laughs> With the damaged car. Not too shabby. Not oh, his wing's repaired itself. That'll be why, won't it? <laughs> his, wing, his wing's back to normal. Oh, I've seen a bit of that to, uh, Believable, tonight. Believable, Jeff. Yeah. I think Depka's wing's just repaired itself as well. There we have it. So Van Loo's not back at full strength, potentially, but he's nowhere near, gonna, he's nowhere near the, top, uh, the top five here, but... Be able to force a result at least in the top six, maybe. Let's well, certainly be Depp the fastest first, driver of the night when he does the thing, so yeah, uh, uh, the most the highest point scorer of the night. So, George Lee Wright just can't do anything about Oscar Manga. He, he seems like it's a tenth here, a tenth there, either way. Yep, sort of swinging from one to the other. Um, uh, Pete Berriman out, Stephen Baxter out, John McCutchinson out, Kip Stevens. Limping around with a damaged car. In 16th, he's the last runner. John Godfrey's 15th after being taken out by his teammate, no less. Uh, David White and uh, Ralph Cullen are pretty close together as well. So let's see what White can do. White led most of race, uh, race three, of course. Is it race three or race two? Uh, trying to remember now. Two, was it? two, yeah. Just understeered wide on that last part of that first sector. He would have been very close, I think. And Luznord's got Depker on this lap, actually. Yeah, through. And away. Did Tom make a mistake or something? Because he's under pressure now from oh. uh, Pickford, too. And Pickford straight through. So, yeah, maybe Dors an issue for Tom. Dorsley writes back within a second now, Alex. So... Well, he was, and then he seems like he's lost a bit again. Yeah, Ma so that's this one. 16-8. Good lap from him. Oh, it was still a 17-2 for George Lee, right? It wasn't a bad yeah. lap. The four tenths. For, just gets a little close, and then Oscar lights it up, pulls, pulls out a good one. So, yeah, he, nice. He's really quick out there as well. 17-0 for him. Thompson, 18-0. Libert, 16-7. Yeah, and a nice lap from him. Not too shabby. 16-9 for Van Luzenor. Depka, yeah, Depka did struggle on that lap. 21-0. Yeah. He's lost out to um, Baker now He's as down well. to 10th, yeah, now. So. And really Pickford. Yeah. What's happened there? Maybe his tyres have gone. 
mean, it's unlikely at this at this temperature, but it's possible. Back, clo George closes back in on this lap as well. Back down from 1.5 to 1.2 seconds. Yeah, it's a it's a weird one, isn't it? This battle, but it, it, this is these are the battles that we love, aren't they? It's um, you know, one one driver comes back with a tenth or two, another driver fights back, and and you know, it's this real tussle. It's not a, a physical battle, is it? Wheel to wheel, but it's one of these great races that you see. Oh. Um, Lebert and Thompson, sorry, they were very very close, and they still are. Thompson defends for now. Do you remember the? First, um, first race at Circuit of the Americas, Lewis Hamilton chased down Sebastian Vettel tenth by tenth by tenth, and then he yep. finally, finally got him. That's what this race reminds me of at the front. But George Lee Wright is, uh, oh, very close between Lebert and Thompson. I think they banged wheels. They were certainly close. I'm not sure they actually hit, but it was extremely close. Final lap of the race then, and Oscar's um, pulled out the Mangan. lead. Mangan's oh. into the pits. What happened to him? Let's he get just, a quick replay of that before. Oh, he um, was pushing hard, and he lost the car in the middle sec in the first sector, over the curbs, into the wall. Oh dear, there's how to lose a race. Gift wrapped. Yeah, oh, I'd have tried for, to drive uh, that back. To be honest. Don't text and drive. He's putting the um, in the chat. So, hmm. Yeah. Well, one man who will be uh, chuckling away inside his Eton Center inspired helmet will be um, George Lee Wright because he, I'll be honest, he's driven great tonight. And, uh, well, he caps off the evening with a great victory. George Lee Wright takes victory here at Road Atlanta. Oscar Mangan fails to convert. Victory with a second. LeBear can't get um, Thompson. Look like there's anything really close going on. No, there isn't. Depka did get uh, P9 in the end. Thanks to the demise of Oscar Mangan. No other close battles as we come into the uh, end of this race. Everyone's separated apart. Mangan's going to only finish 16th after that. And to be honest... Uh, only got himself to blame really last lap nearly a two second lead he didn't need to be pushing out there yeah it's just saying he glanced at hurt. his glanced at his phone made the mistake and that's oh that well you have it ladies and gentlemen don't text and drive it's true take you through the finishing order then and uh chronicle the the first victory in the bsr formula Renault for george lee wright by 2.7 seconds over jack keithley josh thompson was third fighting Hard with Samuel LeBaire for that position. Christian Rose was in fifth. Martin Van Luzenor couldn't take the quadruple. Triple in the sixth place in the end will be pretty decent considering the um, he had a slowdown, he had a crash. All sorts. Mark Pickford finished seventh, just beating David Baker to the finish. Tom Depkin ninth in the end. Not too bad, yeah, despite the fact he dropped down quite a lot. Ralph Cullinan was tenth. Ahead of David White, Jos Honig, a uh, good race from him up to 12th. Paul Denton in 13th. 14th for John Godfrey after being hit by Martin Van Luzenod. And then Kip Stevens um, was... Yeah, he struggled out there, actually, but 15th for him. Oscar Mangan, he should have been the top step of the podium for him. And there is a one. It's one lap down, uh, unfortunately. And then it's Stephen Baxter, John McCutcheon, St. Peter Berryman. They didn't make it to the finish either. A bit of a so-so meeting, if um, I uh, do say so myself. It wasn't bad, was it? And uh, yeah, uh, there That's wasn't quite. It wasn't. It wasn't quite have, yeah, we didn't quite have the action that we might have had in the previous uh, previous rounds, but we still had some good racing out there. And um, yeah, it's um, you know nothing more you can say about that. Actually, races yeah, had probably the smallest retirements that we've had all season long. And um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good, uh, good, decent racing out there, and um, yeah, that's what, what, what we want to see from the series. Right then, um, thank you for there. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll try and speak English in the future. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us here on Apex Racing TV for the BSR Formula Renault. We'll see you on Thursday for the first round of the 
uh, for the second round of the British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship from Okiyama International in Japan. We'll see you later and um, have a good evening.